our documentary. Today we will talk about monetary policy in Australia. Central bank is unlike commercial bank that provide loans and accepting deposit. Here the official rate for um, Australia is set. It is called as cash rate. This rate influences the interest rate on saving and loans that ensures the prices of goods and services will rise quickly. Yes, Linda, the topic for today is quite interesting. As we know, the central bank aims to achieve the ultimate objective of monetary policy like price stability and low unemployment. Therefore, it uses a monetary policy. The Reserve Bank of Australia implements the monetary policy by keeping the cash rate as close as possible to the target. Hmm, Susie, talking about the monetary policy tools, there are few monetary policy tools that are used in Australia. So today we will bring to you the viewers for economists that will feature explain about the policy tools. Monetary policy tools. Aha. Okay, guys. The first monetary policy tool is open market operation. What is open market operation? This is the most effective tool used by the central bank. It does this by conducting money market transaction. The central bank buy and sell the government security and treasury bills in the open market to influence the size of bank deposit. Open market operation increase or decrease the amount of cash cut by bank. When price are rising, the contractionary of a market is used. The central bank will sell treasury bills and government security to the public. Individual, firm and commercial bank will purchase this security. Hence, it reduces bank deposit, the reserve and credit creation of commercial bank. Commercial bank lend less to the business community and leading to a decrease in aggregate demand. Hence, price level also decrease. While exclusionary of the market used in decision, the central bank will buy this security from public, paying them with checks. This makes the reserve of commercial bank average and bank teller more, resulting in an increase in credit creation and money supply, which lead to the fall of interest rate. Hence, this result in an increase in investment, aggregate demand, and internal. In Australia, the reserve bank conduct various types of open market operations, which are daily market operations, non dated market operations, purchase of government security ahead of maturity, and test repurchase agreement. Okay, so now guys, I will explain for you about reserve requirement. So, what is reserve requirement? Reserve requirement is a central bank regulation in controlling money supply. Reserve requirement also known as cash reserve ratio or statutory liquidity ratio. However, not all the countries use reserve requirement as their monetary policy. For Australia, they don't have reserve requirement, but they use capital requirement as a monetary policy, where a bank's assets are its loan or other lines of credit to a customer. Capital requirement, also known as regulatory capital. Capital requirement ensure that banks have enough capital to support this loan. However, Capital requirement aims not only to keep banks solvent, but by extension to keep the entire financial system on a safe footing. Ta-da! So, I'm gonna explain to you guys about the bank rate or discount rate. 
First of all, what is the meaning of bank rate or discount rate? Bank rate or discount rate is the rate of interest which is a central bank charges on loan and advances to a commercial bank. Based on monetary policy, whenever the commercial bank have shortage of funds, they can borrow the loan from the central bank via discount rate or interest rate. For example, in Australia, the latest report released by the Creighton Institute recommends that the government adopt a discount rate that change the world changes and that reflect the riskness of a project. Okay, to understand more about this discount rate, I'll give you one example. Melbourne Metro Rail Project provides a very good example of the discount rate's importance. They say if they use 7% of discount rate as recommended by Infrastructure Australia, the estimated benefits are only a tiny 10% larger than the cost. But by using the 4% discount rate, the project will deliver the benefits that are almost 2.5 times greater than the cost of 9 million on one reading, then the project is expected to be a major economic success on and after its value is marginal. Changing the discount rate has huge implications for the cost-benefit analysis of the new project. Discount rate is also an important determinant of the mix of project that governments consider. Therefore, as you can see in the chart below, changing the discount rate changes the rankings of different projects. Okay, to sum up, during recession or unemployment occur in this country, the central bank will decrease the discount rate as 4%. And this will make the commercial bank and also other people um, easier for them to make the loan from the central bank, which will boost up the aggregate demand, credit creation, and also employment. So I hope you guys can understand what is bank rate or discount rate. So that's all from me. Thank you. So today, I will explain to you what is the meaning of fixing margin requirement. Fixing margin requirement refers to the proportion of the loan amount which is not financed by the bank. It is the part of the loan which a borrower has to raise in order to get his finance. A change in margin implies a change in the loan size. This method is used to encourage credit supply for the needy sector and discourage it for the non-necessary sector. This can be done by increasing the margin amount for the non-necessary sector and reducing the margin for the needy sector. I will give example for you. So, based on the country that I will choose, which is Australia, there is a bank named Australia and New Zealand Bank. Australia and the New Zealand Bank had a 15.2% to 14% for the share of all housing loans and the National of Australia Bank has reduced the fare from 15.5 to 14.8%. Meanwhile, the CBA Central Bank of Australia has reduced the percent from 26.5% to 26.2%. These falls have explain why the banks are pushing hard to win customers, extending cashback offers between $20,000 and $4,000.